Hi everyone, happy Monday. Today we're going to be talking about the newest fragrance releases and discussing whether or not I personally want to purchase them and why. I'm just going to be sharing my thoughts with you. This is a fragrance news series I do on this channel every single Monday, but I also do additional videos on Wednesdays and Fridays, along with a ton of bonus content in between. So if you're interested, do consider subscribing. Just this past week, I actually did publish, I think, like four full-length videos, and I was able to keep that the week before. So, um, if you subscribe, you will be getting videos from me constantly because I love producing content. So with that being said, let's dive on right into it. I do want to say I did get some questions last week about like how can you talk about new releases when you haven't even smelled them. It's called news. It's called fragrance news. It's the same thing as someone uh, releasing an article about what's new, um, a new item, a new release. We're literally just discussing it in a news sense. And if I say, oh yeah, I think this will smell like X, Y, and Z, it's with a grain of salt because I'm not smelling it. So I just want to make sure that's out there. I just want to explain myself because I feel like there was a little bit of confusion because some people don't understand when I say fragrance news. I'm talking about discussing fragrances, discussing the marketing, discussing the approach, uh, and informing you of what's new on the market. I'm not going to go out here and buy all these fragrances every single week. That's not possible. But we can have a nice, convenient way to talk about what's new. So the first fragrance I really want to talk about is the new release by Lake and Sky. They're releasing 1111 Vanilla. This is a perfume that I literally just saw like this morning when I opened my phone. And it's a new fragrance based off of their best-selling 1111 perfume. That fragrance is iconic. People love it. Um, and I'm actually one of them. It's already, by the way, this fragrance is already sold out, so I can tell this is going to be a bit of a hit. Um, and this perfume has notes of sea salt and star apple with vanilla cream, marshmallow, and passion flower, and then a base of amber, teakwood, and their signature 1111 skin scent musk. So if you haven't smelled 1111 before, it's kind of similar. It's in the same vein as Glossier U. I'm trying to think of what other fragrances. Fragrances that are very uh, light and not as like intense. It's a musk, but it's a very clean smelling musk. So I'm curious to see how they will develop that uh, DNA with this new 1111 vanilla release. I'm excited to see marshmallow as a note in here. I feel like this is definitely something I absolutely want to smell uh, because I feel like it would be very exciting. 1111 is a fragrance that I actually do have on my like wish list. I think that it's a fragrance that I would like to buy at some point. I just have it because for me, like I have so many fragrances I wear and sometimes like, when I want to wear a fragrance, I want to wear something that's a little bit more intense. 1111 is more of a fragrance that I would wear just for me. So that's why I haven't uh, bought it just yet because when I do want to wear a perfume. I want it to be like a little bit va va boom. I want to be able to smell myself, to smell the sillage. Um, and yeah, but I am excited about this release. This next fragrance, I have, um, I actually saw this literally right when I was done filming last week's video. And I saw this and I was like, oh, I missed it. Uh, why? But this is Replica's Afternoon Delight fragrance. And this is actually something that I will be smelling and I'm considering purchasing this. This is a fragrance that I think it's already been released, but uh, this is a perfume inspired by Gourmand Notes, inspired by the Croissant. And you have top notes of Madagascar Vanilla, a heart of a Madeleine Accord, and then a base of Sandalwood and Musk. Sorry, my mistake. It's inspired by Madeleines. Um, and I think this is very interesting because Replica, they're not known for releasing gourmands, but they're doing that here. I mean, yes, you have the gourmand in the sense of like by the fireplace, jazz club, those fragrances do have vanilla notes. So it depends on what your interpretation of gourmand may be. You might be able to call those fragrances gourmands because of the vanilla, but this is the first time I've seen them come out with a fragrance that is literally a dessert smell. And I'm excited to smell this. I think this would be very interesting. Um, I have one fragrance from Replica that I actually, the one I have is, in my opinion, one of the most chronically underrated scents, and that is On a Date. If you're a fan of, like, an aromatic floral, um, vetiver, 
try that fragrance out, smell that fragrance. It is absolutely delightful and literally one of my favorite scents in my collection. It is so good, but I am also excited for this one as well. Next up, we have a release from Fleur. Now, this is actually a perfume that I was considering purchasing myself because I saw the hype on TikTok. I was like, I was excited because I, it's interesting, actually. We can discuss this um, as we progress with the series, but I've noticed a lot of brands really do an interesting job of rolling out their fragrances on TikTok. So, like, instead of releasing it like in the traditional sense you literally have like it released on tiktok shop um or announced on tiktok and then everyone gets really hyped about uh, hyped about that fragrance that fragrance might have like a lot of sponsorships and that is the case here so i think what Fleur is doing is very interesting because they have like a almost like a subgroup of people that are really excited about their products on tiktok and with this release this is called heavy cream and this is a fragrance mist and this has already sold out and I think like it sold out within the first 24 hours of it actually being announced on TikTok which is crazy I mean it sold out in a smaller size uh, but this has notes of lemon sugar marshmallow and orange at the top a heart of jasmine blossom coconut cream and vegan uh, vegan and bretolide and then a base of vanilla mousse salted caramel and whipped cream a lot of people have been saying that this is a fragrance that very is, is a little bit more focused on the marshmallow it's not as citrusy as uh, one might expect simply by like hearing those notes um, I actually was considering getting this fragrance but I, I would have gotten the smaller size but the larger size was the only one left in stock when I was on the website um, and for me when it comes to buying new fragrances I think I've like reached a point where I'm trying to buy smaller sizes and I mean obviously if I if I'm able to have a larger size it's fine but if I'm trying a fragrance for the first time I don't want it to be like a larger size especially if I'm blind buying it the other reason why I didn't buy it is because it's limited edition and I know I'm like in, in, in misinformed or ill-informed about this but um, I'm, I, I'm not sure how Flora does their limited editions. Are they uh, just one release and that's it? Are they gone? Or are they uh, released um, over a certain like period of time and then they pull them? So I'm curious about how they qualify their limited editions. So based off of that, I didn't want to spend money on like the larger size. If it might, I wouldn't be able to talk about it after the hype died down, you know, because I want to be able to spend my money on fragrances that I could talk about for an extended period of time, fragrances I can recommend for an extended period of time, instead of just diving into the hype. So that's my two cents on this. I am actually really excited about this release and I did order I did order the vanilla version of this body mist. I smelled the fragrance in store and I was like, this is really good. So yeah, I mean, Fleur is not a fragrance brand that I have been like shopping at the bit to purchase from in the past. I love Chriselle Lim. She is the owner of Fleur and what she's been doing with the marketing and her general aesthetic is like, I love her. Um, but her fragrances, like they, like, I mean, I think missing person to me I didn't really get that hype I, I didn't really like that fragrance on me um but these gourmand fragrances they're like gourmand but they're not too sweet and I'm actually really excited to see um to have uh this kind of like theme continue on through the Fleur releases like this uh quite a gourmand twist that they're doing um I'm excited about this one okay so next up we have a new release from Marc Jacobs this is going to be called the perfect elixir this is an ambery sweet and fruity perfume with top notes of rhubarb honey and plum a mid of orange blossom and amber and then a base of patchouli vanilla and resin it's interesting to see uh, notes that are so widely used and adored by people in the niche fragrance space kind of like being circulated into the designer space. Rhubarb is not a note that I see a lot in designer fragrances. I think I've seen it in like uh, Alien... no wait no. Mugler's... I'm literally forget... Aura. Yeah, I've seen it in Mugler's Aura. But I don't think I've ever seen rhubarb in other designer fragrances. So I'm curious about smelling this one. However, let me just cycle back and say, I am not like a super fan of the Marc Jacobs fragrances. They just haven't really been to my liking in the past. So I'm definitely not going to blind buy this, but I am looking forward to smelling it in store, especially with that rhubarb and honey combination. I feel like this will be an interesting fragrance. Um, and yes, they're going for the elixir version, which is... 
theoretically going to be a little bit more intense. But for me, I know that Marc Jacobs does have like some phenomenal scents that people really love. But for me, they just haven't been to my taste. And whenever I smell a fragrance, it's even if it's a designer, I kind of want it to like be like um, unforgettable for me. Like I want it to be a very special perfume. Like I don't want to smell something and be like, okay, it smells okay. And then just like not get it like or just not like it as much or not love it so for me like there's never been anything from Marc Jacobs that I've smelled and I've loved so this is why this is gonna be a pass for me likely but it's a designer fragrance so I have no problem with smelling it in store okay so next up we have a new release of five fragrances from Dior Francis Kurdishan is the new creative director for the fragrance house so he is cycling out some really like I mean new releases new launches so that's why I've been we've been seeing some uh, newness coming from Dior and he is working on creating these five fragrances they're in a new fragrance concentration called Esperits de Parfum my pronunciation is horrible but uh, this is going to feature the fragrances Gris Dior, Ambre Nuit, Oud Isfahan, Lucky and Rouge Trafalgar so he is essentially taking the kind of like best-selling fragrances that I just like mentioned like well the best-selling fragrances from the five fragrance category of Dior and he is repackaging them or like reworking with that DNA and changing up uh, changing it up a little bit and launching these these perfumes. So um I'm curious to see how different these interpretations will be. Um I'm interested. Um I can't say again this is not something I'm going to blind by. Um, but I am curious about it. I think this will be an interesting kind of release. I, I think the packaging is always beautiful when it comes, or the bottle design is always beautiful when it comes to these Dior fragrances. It's one of my favorites, um, I would say, in the luxury fragrance or luxury designer fragrance category. Um, I think these are beautiful. I think both these and the Guerlain bottles are stunning. But yeah, I'm excited about this. I would say the one that I am most interested in is Gris Dior. Um, that's because I really do love the fragrance itself that this is going to be based off of. So if I choose one, I would say that one is the one I am most interested in smelling. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. We have a new release by Dolce & Gabbana. This is going to be a fragrance for dogs, and this is going to be called Fefe. Okay, so this is inspired by the dog uh, that belongs to Dominica Dolce and Guilherme um, Siquiera. Um, basically, one of them is the founders of, D of Dolce & Gabbana. I don't know. I'm not like super well-versed when it comes to the internal structure of Dolce & Gabbana, not gonna lie. That brand to me is like not like my favorite even though I do love the Imperatrice by them um, but I'm not like I'm not up to date or up to speed on what's going on with their with their uh, founders and everything but this is basically a fragrance inspired by their dog so for dogs it's alcohol free by the way so I don't know if I mentioned that it's supposed to give a pleasant scent to the dog's fur while respecting their skin sensitivity so I think that's great. Um, I think it's very considerate of them. You have top notes of a Lang Lang and a heart note of musk and then a base of sandalwood. So theoretically, this does sound like a fragrance that would smell good. I feel like if someone's absolutely obsessed with dogs and fragrances, this is a very unique and interesting release that's kind of exciting and to be honest like I've dogs I've dogs had a little bit so I'm not like totally unfamiliar with with animals but for me the idea of putting a fragrance on your pet can't you just wash it <laughs> like if you're going to scent your dog like can't you just just wash the dog instead that's just my opinion if you are a dog owner would this be an exciting release for you I do think that the scent seems like very mild and people pleasing so I don't think that'd be an issue but I'm just like imagining, like, just imagine like you're walking your dog and you spray like the fragrance on the dog and you meet someone and they're like, oh, what is that, that smell? You, and you're just, you just say, it's my dog. I gave it a dog perfume. Just like imagine. <laughs> but the, but the brief, like the marketing brief that I'm opening up and reading is like very dramatic, by the way. It's kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, are you interested in a dog perfume? Would you buy a dog perfume for yourself or for your dog? Uh, would you go matching matching 
I think that would kind of be cute, I guess, like, so long as the dog's not the only one wearing the perfume. I feel like if the dog is the only one wearing the perfume, and you're not wearing the perfume, that's a little bit odd. And what if the dog doesn't like the perfume? Yeah, what if the dog doesn't like the perfume? These are these are important questions to be ha to be having, like very honestly. Okay, so we have a new release by Mathieu Premier. Uh, this is going to be called Falcon Leather the Extra de Parfum, and this is already available. It's going to be part of their permanent line, and this perfume will have top notes of saffron, a mid of birch and tar, and then a base of benzoin and cistus. Um, and apparently it's also a leather fragrance. So I don't know if this if this uh scent list is complete but um i i mean it's interesting i definitely i love leather as a fragrance note it's one of my favorite notes so i like to see these leather releases i think it's something that i personally really really jive with because um leather is one of my favorite fragrance notes and i feel like this would be an interesting perfume to smell but um mattia premier is not necessarily a fragrance brand that i'm like always always on top of so I don't really I, I don't have a ton of familiar familiarity with their scents uh but yeah this seems interesting so if you're a fan of leather this might be one to consider okay another kind of like cutesy release is Nina Precious Gold and this is going to be a fragrance that has notes of tangerine, Sicilian lemon and bergamot at the top a uh, heart of orange blossom pistachio, musk and almond, and then a base of ambroxan, cedar, and vanilla. It's interesting that we're seeing more and more pistachio releases. Um, I, I, I mean, obviously, I do think that pistachio gelato was like a big, uh, was a big trailblazer when it came to the whole pistachio trend because before pistachio gelato, like pistachios were just like not really seen in the fragrance uh, space, and now you have so many brands coming out with pistachio, with interpretations of pistachio in their fragrances, and I think that's very exciting and very interesting, and also kind of like proves how innovative Mona Catan over at Kaoli really is, because she is so good at kind of identifying what consumers want and creating fragrances to reflect that, and I think that's fascinating. Um, I know we're talking about Nina Ricci here, but I just wanted to interject that. Um, I don't really, I, I'm not, not super familiar with Nina Ricci's perfumes. Um, I have tried, like, I think, have I tried anything? I don't think I've tried anything from them. Um, it seems cute. This seems like a fun one. Um, is it for me? Probably not. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's like a citrusy pistachio scent. So what's, what's not to like with almond? I feel like this would be interesting. And I, I'm kind of curious about like how, uh, because sometimes almond can pull a little bit kind of like can smell like cherry sometimes so I'm, I'm curious to see how that would how uh, what that would be like so yeah new release from Nina Ricci oh okay so this is a new one also from Francis Curtijan Maison Francis Curtijan this is going to be called a pomme and uh this is already available and this will be a fragrance that has top notes of sweet florals a heart of lavender and lang lang and orange blossoms and then a base of vanilla and white musk and this is going to be a fougere. Francis Gurdjian is, he's busy. He's busy. He's coming out with releases for, for his brand and Dior, um, and probably working on some other ones. Yeah, that man is likely very busy. Um, I, fougeres are not my thing. There, I said it. Fougeres are not usually my thing. For me, like, there have been, um, there have been some times where I have smelled a fragrance that's like a little bit more on the green side, a little bit more on the aromatic side, and I, I fall in love with it and I've purchased it. But that usually happens in person. It definitely doesn't, like, it doesn't happen because I'm like seeking the fragrance out. It literally just happens because like I smell the fragrance and I'm like, wow, this is not a scent profile I'm usually going for, but then I try it and I really love it. So that might happen with this. I don't know. Um, I don't really have any of them as own Francis Courage and fragrances. Like I literally don't have like them at all. I don't have decants. I don't have samples. Well, I might have a few samples from like I think one of their releases last year. Like they're a very clean one. That one I really liked. But I'm not super familiar with like what they have to offer. I don't like actively seek out the fragrances from this line. 
um, but the bottle does look pretty. Their bottles always look rather beautiful. So, yeah, a uh, new release from Maison Costas Courgeon. Are you interested in getting it? So that's the thing. Um, also, they have a new release from Zerzhov. This is going to be called Nucleus. It's interesting that we're seeing all these gold bottles. Um, it's going to be part of the permanent line, and this fragrance will have top notes of soft rose petal, green notes, and then milky notes, a heart of, again, soft rose petals, caramel, and white musk, and then a base of rose petals, vanilla, sandalwood, and white musk. Um, this seems interesting. I would honestly be down for trying this. I will say this. I have tried a few Zerzhov fragrances, and I, I definitely... Uh, will this be the year I get my first Zerzhov fragrance? Maybe, I don't know. But like, Zerzhov is one of those aspirational brands for me that I really want to get some fragrances from them. Um, they have like a gorgeous DNA, like the way they do their musks is so beautiful and so elegant. And as someone who really loves leather, I, I want to have their leather perfumes. Like the Tony Iommi, like the second one I like a little bit more than the first, but Zerzhov is on my like two like on my wish list, wish list for sure. Um, I won't say that this is like going to be. I, I don't know if this fragrance would be a fragrance that's prioritized on that wish list because they have so many other amazing options. Uh, but yeah, if you're a fan of roses, might be one for you. I like how they're making it more of a like tonic fragrance and juxtaposing the rose with like electronic notes and caramel. I feel like this will be very interesting and I actually am curious about smelling it simply just to experience their interpretation of caramel. So this is exciting for me. Next up we have a new release by Byredo. This is going to be called Mojave Ghost Elixir uh, or Mojave Ghost Absolute. Okay. And this is a flanker of their original Mojave Ghost. It has top notes of sapodilla, a heart of violet, and then a base of sandalwood, ambergris, and ambrette. This is going to be an elevated version of Mojave Ghost. And apparently, Sabodilla is a Jamaican blackberry. So that's interesting. I honestly am quite intrigued by this. I definitely do want to smell it. Blackberry is one of those fragrance notes. No one really does blackberry. But whenever I smelled a blackberry in a fragrance, I love it. I think Gucci Guilty Absolute, I love that fragrance. I think it has blackberry. What else has blackberry? Um... Kama by Pernoir, Noir. Love that fragrance. It's an amazing. So yeah, I'm actually curious about trying this. I haven't been super big of a fan of the other Byredo fragrances in the past because to my mind, I think that the price is difficult to justify when you consider how the longevity of the fragrance is, in my opinion. I know that Byredo is super popular. A lot of people love it for a good reason, but that's just where I stand with Byredo. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. These were all the fragrance releases I wanted to talk about today. Let me know, is there anything that sticks out at you? Like, is there anything that you were super excited about? Is there anything that you absolutely do not know why this is being released? Uh, share your thoughts. I'm interested in hearing them. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.